So in this part of the lesson, we're going to go into iCore animations by creating a gradient animation. So we're going to begin by creating an instance of CA gradient layer. And one important step as well is that we need to import this framework, which is Quartz Core. So if you need to know more details about a feature of Apple or a framework or a class, whichever, you can always go to the Apple documentation or read online. So here we can read that Quartz Core, also known as Core Animation, is an Objective-C framework that is to declaratively build an animatable scene graph. So this is the first definition that we would have. So in that instance, we're going to use the CA gradient layer. And there are three different steps into creating a gradient. So first, we're going to configure this one with a start and end point. Then we're going to define the colors, the location, and then finally return the gradient layer. So this class that we define is inheriting from the UI view class. So that's going to be a subclass of UI view. Then we define the gradient layer. Finally, we configure the gradient with the start and end point. So that's going to be a CG point to indicate the X and Y coordinates of the gradient. So we have the X with zero. So that's always going to be a float. And that's going to be like the top left corner of the view. And for the Y axis, it's going to be halfway, 0 0.5. For the end point, we're going to have 1. 0 0.0 as a value of the x coordinate, meaning that the gradient is going to stretch across the x axis on the UI view. Finally, we have the colors. So we have already started by defining the first color, which is yellow, and we must always specify a CG color. So you can actually press an option and click in order to have more details about a class. So the quartz color reference that corresponds to the receiver's color. This is part of the quartz core framework. So you must always end with .cg color. We're going to be doing the same for the other color. So we have yellow. Then we have another color, which is going to be red. I'm going to add another one. And it's going to be orange. So that's it. We're going to have three colors for the gradient. And the last steps, once you have your colors, is assigning to the properties of the gradients. So by doing like so. So we have these colors. And we're going to assign the colors that we have just defined. We're going to do the same for the location, which is going to be the relative width for each of the colors that we have just defined. So here we have 0 0.25 that corresponds to the yellow color. Then we're going to have another location, and that's going to be 0 0.5 for red. Finally, 0 0.75 for orange. And the other step we're going to do just like for colors, we're going to assign so these new defined locations to the locations property of the gradient layer. And finally, what we do is returning the gradient layer. Next, what we're going to do is creating the mask of the gradient. So right below, you can see this command, create the text mask, and that's going to be the text that we're going to display for the UI view. And we're going to define the different attributes of that text. So here you can see that we have an alignment attribute, so that's going to be center regardless, and we have a font and a size that you can also change right here if you would like something bigger or smaller. So that's going to be the text attribute of the text max. Next, what we're going to do, this is more interesting because here you're going to understand how you can actually create a sets attributes for the inspector of your interface builder. So here we're using at IP inspectable and a variable text, which is going to be a string. So that's going to be displayed and I'm going to explain how it works in a moment because what we do basically is, is being able to create attributes which are going to be available in the attribute inspector of the interface builder. So I'm going to show you what I mean by going back to the main storyboard and we're going to expand the sidebar. We're going to select this view right here. So you see that we have already assigned. so. A class for this view which is gradient animator so the class that we have created so this view is a gradient animator a subclass of UI view and the attributes inspector includes also this text that we have actually defined inside our class so this text right here corresponds to this text and you could add something different like that could be color or it's just an example and then you'd be able to see it right here so here we have slot machine meaning that we're going to be able to read a text slot machine, which is going to be corresponding 
to a text mask. So we're going to continue with the definition of our text mask. Right here we have this comment. And basically what we're going to do is create a mask, which is going to be let mask layer. That's going to be the name of our mask. I'm going to name it like so. Then what we need to do is define so different things for this mask. First, the background color. And in that instance, we want to use the radiant color, the gradient color, sorry. So we're just going to assign a clear color. And we must always finish with CG color in that instance as well. So it's going to be mask layer, background color, and we're going to keep the background color clear. Next, we want to also define the frame of this mask. And that's going to be CG rect offset. And that's going to be equivalent to the bounds. So the bounds of the view and also the bounds width, size width. And for this one, we're going to keep it zero. So that's going to be for the frame of the mask layer. Finally, we're going to have the content of this mask. So it's going to be represented by this property contents. So that's going to be image, the one that we just created at the top, and that's going to be CG image. So you see that what we have defined right here, which is going to be representative of the layer mask, of the text mask, it's going to be assigned to the contents of the mask layer. And finally, what's left to do is assigning this mask that we just created to the mask of the gradient layer, like so. And that's it. What we would do next is allowing to lay out the subviews as subviews to the view that we're going to be using, which is going to be our slot machine. So here, what we do in that function is creating a frame. So you are already familiar with this function probably. It takes an X, Y, width, and height. The only difference is here, you could easily make a gradient which is twice as much bigger than the um, original width of the gradient of the view that you're going to use. So here we do, we're doing twice bound size width, meaning that we're going to have a width for a gradient width, which is going to be twice bigger. And finally, we have did move to window where we're going to create our animation. So that is very important. And I'm going to leave that for another parts.